Hey, so now let's try to answer the next question of the paper. That's question number 20. This question also hold three marks and it also has two parts. Here we have the first part of this question on the board, which wants us to identify the part of the electromagnetic spectrum used in radar and eye surgery. We also need to mention in the question their frequency range. Okay, so this part of the question hold one mark. Let's see the answer to this part. So microwaves are used for radar system and their frequency range is from 1 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz while ultraviolet rays are used in eye surgery and their range is 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power 17 hertz. And if you have written only this much in the exam for this part of the question, you are done with it. You are going to score one mark completely for this part of the question. Let's have a look on to the next part which hold two marks. This says prove that the average energy density of the oscillating electric field is equal to that of the oscillating magnetic field. Now let's have a look on to the explanation for this part of the question. For traveling electromagnetic wave we can write the equation for the electric and magnetic field in this way because both are going to be time dependent and we also have two important results which are c is equal to e naught by b naught and c is equal to 1 upon square root of mu naught epsilon naught. Now electric field energy density or the average electric field energy density will be given by half epsilon naught e square and the average of that okay. So when you will substitute here the value of e you are going to get to this equation and if you will take the average of a sine square in the bracket kx minus omega t what you are going to get that will come out to be half over a long time okay. So this is what was required from you to mention there that the average of a sine square kx minus omega t will come out to be half over a long time and when you will substitute its value this average energy density of electric field comes out to be 1 by 4 of epsilon naught e naught square okay. Moving further you can find out the same thing for magnetic field also so magnetic field energy density again we are taking the average so the average energy density for magnetic field will be 1 by 2 mu naught we need to take the average of b square when you will put the value of b square and take the average of sine square kx minus omega t that will again come out to be half for a longer time and hence you will get the average energy density of magnetic field to be b naught square divided by 4 mu naught and you are going to mark this as equation 2. Further we have seen this relation between the electric field and the magnetic field so B naught will be E naught by C and when you will substitute here B naught in terms of E naught you will get the expression for the magnetic field energy density or the average magnetic field energy density to be 1 by 4 epsilon naught E naught square. So this is the same that we have derived for the average energy density for electric field and hence we can see that equation 1 and equation 3 the average electric field energy density and average magnetic field energy density are equal. Now let me just explain you the marking scheme for this part of the question. So as I have told you this part of the question was for 2 marks. Half mark you will get when you will write this relation. Half mark you will get when you will calculate the electric field energy density. So you are going to get half mark for this part. You are going to get the half mark for calculating the average magnetic field energy density and final half mark you will get when you will compare both the results and you will write that both are equal okay. So this is how you are going to get 2 out of 2 marks for this part of the question and total 3 out of 3 marks for this question. Let's move on to the discussion for the next question.